This is Hollis Turnbow welcoming you back and I want to reach out and grab your hand as we walk down to that long journey to Quilt as Desired. In this show today I'm going to show you what's really exciting for me and the part of the whole quilt making and designing process that I enjoy and that's what I call the custom design. I'm convinced that anyone can learn to draw. I'm going to show you some of those concepts and techniques that you can easily do yourself without having to go to art school. We'll be right back and we'll start on what I consider a very exciting part of the journey. Welcome back. This is Hollis Turnbull again. We're going to be talking now about custom designs. And that's the part that I really enjoy. You know, I'm convinced that anyone can learn to draw. Back I remember years ago in the magazines, there was always an ad that you could do a mail order course with the, some kind of special art school somewhere. And for a very little amount of money, they would teach you to, have, to be a cartoonist or whatever. But I didn't have that opportunity, never did do that. I had some art courses in school, but never did the drawing part. So several years ago, I was asked to design a series of whole cloth quilts. And whole cloth are those quilt types There's just the sandwich together. And the quilting motif and the quilting is what makes the design. There's no patchwork or applique. And my first attempt at that was tracing someone else's designs because the company had bought the designs uh, from a Mennonite quilter down in Virginia. So it was my task to enlarge it and draw it. So here I am on my big table that I'd set up and I was drawing. And One day I was drawing feathers and I said to myself, I said, you know, I've done this before. But I don't believe in reincarnation, so where did all this happen? And I suddenly realized that there had been something in my early life that gave me a basic skill in order to draw. And that was elementary penmanship, the way the teacher had said, the flow of the hand, the flow of the hand. So that set me on this, realizing that anyone can draw. And I developed a very interesting concept, the secret to drawing a perfect heart or a perfect tulip is when both sides match. So the mirror image concept comes into play in what I consider custom designs. And I want to show you now uh, several examples of those things and hope that you'll get excited about it and want to do the same for you. First thing you need is some graph paper. You know, these are printed so that the lines are here, you follow the lines and you'll be fine. And then it's a segmenting uh, certain parts of that. And this is back in elementary school time in which we use protractors and compass and all of those simple tools. So you lay out your design till you get down to the point that you really need to put a motif in. And here's some line drawings of one piece that I did. This was, uh, I believe, a six point star that I made that had kind of wonky looking uneven diamonds in it. So I first took my protractor and I set out the segments here, drew lines, because you really need to draw lines so you'll know where to mark or where you to design. So here's the section that I need a single motif in. And this is the one that was eventually created. This is for the first one. See what I mean when I said both sides match? All I needed to do was to draw one side of it. And then here are the two sections for both of the triangular shapes and diamond shapes in the piece. See how as long as this matches this and this is this. One other thing I learned here, which I'll be talking about a little bit later on, is the fact that there is one common architectural element that we see everywhere, and that's the S. 
you look over at the table here to my left, you see a lot of those examples that I've picked up over the years. For instance, this coat rack. Look at the S that's in it. This little Christmas tree uh, that I bought. Look at the S. The bunny rabbit. Look at the S. And then if you live in a historic town, look at the houses and see all of the S's that are in the gingerbread on the houses. So then I took, my journey took then to developing a series of designs based on the S, which the one I just showed you did. So I at least have a start. I don't have to go and think about, you know, how do I start, what is the first mark? So this is just a series of large and small S's with some added little embellishments to it. So this was the six point uh, uh, star that I did, made a quilt uh, out of this design and gave it for an auction or something like that. So let's go back to the idea, get a little bit more fancy in this one. But again, all I had to do was to create the one smallest complete segment of this design. This is divided into eight pieces, so I doodled this. See my S here? My S comes up here. Draw that basic skeleton line and then start adding embellishments to it, keeping within the parameters of the space that you're going to be doing. I bought an old quilt, very bad condition, but it was a French quilt, French stuffed work, and that's very much like the Italian Trapunto, except the technique is a little bit different. And this is the design that I created from that. But all I needed to do was this much. And then it's a repetition, a mirror image of that same design throughout. And these basic elements that I used here came directly off the quilt. So again, this was my source. This, this was my uh, uh, source for all of these designs using that very simple S. But next time you're out driving, look at all the architecture. And then that brought me to what I consider a very ultimate design, which I did. And I did this as a birthday gift, and I developed the concept of the super simple S stencil, or the quilter's uh, French curve is another title, you know, and architects have the French curve that has all of these uh, curly cues on it. So this is my, uh, my uh, answer to that. And then this is the quilt that was developed from it. A little quilt uh, celebrating a birthday, all using that basic concept of an S. Now I want to go and talk about perhaps alternate ways of doing your quilting. You know, using it at the sewing machine as we traditionally do is not, not the ultimate and the final story that you do. So I want to give you a couple examples of that. Our new machines today have embroidery uh, capability. And for those, there have been developed CD discs that have the embroidery designs into them. And the stencil company has a whole series that they have transferred into CD, and they're formatted to all the sewing machines that have the embroidery capability. So I set about doing a very simple quilt initially, just using that embroidery to quilt it. All I had to do was to hoop this into the machine, center it, press the button, and the machine did the quilting for me. Very easy concept, very easy things. A lot of the new machines have these already built in, and one of the companies have a whole series of my designs that were built right into the machine. So there's a CD disc that fits your embroidery machine of almost every type that you want. So from that, I started working on a sample to use for this, uh, this uh, part of the show. <laughs> Again, I had participated in a fabric exchange, and then this one was oriental fabrics. So I wanted to work out uh, something that was oriental that could use not only my fat quarters that were exchanged, but also the computer disk here. So I sat down and I started doodling with my ruler. I knew I wanted some large sections in the quilt, 
in which I could put a design, then some patchwork that would add some interest to it, and then I selected a design that I then quilted onto a piece of fabric with the embroidery unit on the machine. Now, I want to say this, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. After this was done, I realized that using the same color thread with the background did not give me the, the design that I wanted, so I should have used slightly different uh, value of thread here so the design would stand up because since the fabric is printed in kind of a strippy look, the design for me is totally lost. But this is the concept that we would do. In the center would be the five inch uh, design. The next would be the four inch. And then out in four inch, right here it is. And then out here would be the three inch. And again, each one of those would have uh, this particular size into it. So what I've done now is a very simple background, left spaces to use my uh, uh, computer generated design, focus is on oriental, uh, I will quilt only in the ditch here because here is the design focus. Have a nice unique, truly original for me quilt and it can be for you. Stick around. I have another example that I want to show you. I need a little time to get set up, give you time to take a little bit of break. Come back because this is really a good one.